Section 5.4 is parameters for the binomial distributions. What are the four conditions that must be met in order to have a binomial distribution? Fixed number of trials, independent trials, that means that the outcome of one trial does not influence the outcome of another trial. Only two outcomes, probability of success must remain constant. In this section, we're going to be assuming that we're working with a binomial distribution, so that means that these four conditions must be met. If you suspect one of these four conditions are not met, then these formulas for mean, variance, and standard deviation will not apply. So you've got to check these assumptions first. The mean, remember, is an average value or the expected value. It's what we expect to happen. And the way that we find the mean is by looking at n times p. n is the number of trials times the probability of success. If there's a 10% chance of drawing a defective widget whenever I'm producing or I check 100 widgets, about how many widgets do I expect to find that are defective if 10% of them are de defective? Let me write that down. If I randomly select 100 widgets and 10% are defective, that 10% being defective means that because of the nuances with the machine and the people I have working for me, 10% of the widgets that are produced are defective. If I randomly select 100 of them, how many would I expect to be defective? 10 because that's 100 times 10%. The mean is your expected value. It's what we expect to happen. So the formula that we use for finding the mean is n times p. n here is going to be the fixed number of trials. p is the probability of success. And one of the n trials and q is the probability of failure. And we were told also that if we don't know q but we know p, we can figure out what q is because there's only two outcomes, either success or failure. And the probability of success plus the probability of failure has to be equal to 1. So if there's a 10% chance of success, what would the probability of failure be? 90%. The variance here is n times p times q. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q because the standard deviation is always going to be the square root of the variance. These are formulas, guys, that you can put on your formula sheet. Here's an example problem. Suppose 20 donors came to a blood drive. 6% of the people are universal donors. What is the probability of getting two or three universal donors? We just did that in the last section. That was the probability of getting exactly two successes plus the probability of getting exactly three successes, and we said that that was 0.311. The next question that I'm asked now, going beyond that for this same scenario, is what is the mean and the standard deviation for this situation? The mean here is the expected value. It's what we expect to get, and that's going to be n times p. Our sample size for this problem is 20, and our probability of success is 0 0.06. And 20 times 0 0.06 is 1.2. So let's say our math department was having a blood drive, and 6% of the world's population is O negative, and we have 20 people show up. That means that we can expect to have one or two O negative blood donors. What's the standard deviation? The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and our variance is n times p times q. This is 20 times 0 0.06 times point what? What's q? 0.94. And this ends up being square root of 20 times 0 0.06 times 0.94 is 1.06. We'll call that 1.1. Changing the question now, what if the Red Cross needs at least 1,850 units of O negative blood out of 32,000 donors. This has got to be a nationwide blood drive. We can use the binomial model to find exactly 1,850 donors, but the phrase at least means that we have to include the probability of getting the 1,851, 1,852, all the way up to 32,000. Well, there's several ways we can go about doing this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability of getting exactly 1,850 blood donors. For this problem, what is n equal to? 32,000. What is p? 
It's the same problem. All right, it didn't state it in this problem, but the 6% we're told up here, 6%. I'm still talking about the Red Cross and blood drive. We haven't changed the percentage of O-negative blood donors yet, so P is 0.06. So finding the probability of exactly 1,850, I can do on my calculator by going to second bars, go up to binomial PDF, enter, and what number do I put in first? 32,000 is the sample size, then 0 0.06, the probability, then 1850, the number of successes we're interested in. So that ends up being 0 0.0024. There is a 0.2% chance of getting exactly 1,850 O negative donors out of 32,000. Very, very small likelihood. But the question wasn't, what's the probability of getting exactly? The question was, what's the probability of getting at least 1,850? At least means I could have 1,850 or more. Well, in the previous problem where I had the probability of two or three out of five, or if I said at least five, I could do probability of two plus three plus four plus five. But this, there's just too many numbers to do this on. So here's what we're going to do. We have a distribution, second bars, for a binomial CDF. The binomial CDF is a cumulative distribution function. The binomial CDF is a cumulative distribution function. It totals the probability of successes from 0 to x. Whatever I plug in for x for the number of successes, it adds up all of the probabilities from 0 up to that point. So I can use the binomial CDF to answer this question, what's the probability of getting at least 1,850? Now I'm going to draw a picture kind of to explain this and show you what happens. I'm going to use this picture of a normal distribution just because it's one that we're accustomed to looking at. If we had a normal distribution, the total area under the curve is going to be 1, 100% of the area under the curve. If I wanted to know the probability from 1850 successes over, but this CDF gives me the lower end here, it gives me the probability of success from the lower end, how do I end up with this probability right here? Well, what I would do is 1 minus the binomial CDF from n with n comma p comma x minus 1 because I'm interested in including the 1,850th person, and this totals up then, this region right here would give me this, this information right here. The binomial CDF tells me the total probability up to that 849th person. So on our calculator then, we would take the binomial CDF for 32,000 trials, comma, there's a 6% chance of having O negative blood, comma, and I want to find the total probabilities up until the 1,849th person because this CDF includes this person right here. And I don't want that person in my at least 1850. So I get a total number for this. And then I subtract that number from 1. 1 minus this number gives me the probability of having at least 1,850 people that are O negative blood donors out of my 32,000. So that's a good likelihood. There's a 95% chance that I'm going to meet my quota with this blood drive. So what this means is to answer the question of what's the probability of getting at least 1,850, I wanted to include that 1,850th person over here. So I had to take away all the way up to the 1,850, and the one right before that is 1,849. That's using a binomial CDF. For the interpretation of the results, remember we said that as long as you're within the two standard deviations of the mean, we consider that to be a usual value. So here's our normal distribution. The mean is going to be a number that's in the middle. For our 32,000 blood donors, what would the mean be? 6% of 32,000 is 1920. The standard deviation, remember, is the square root of NPQ. So what is that going to be? That's 32,000 times 0 0.06 times 0 0.94. 
So the maximum usual value would be the mean plus 2 times 42, or 84. So 1920 plus 84 is 2004. That would be the maximum usual value. That means that if I got 2004 O negative donors out of 32,000 donors total, it'd be a little high, but it's still within the what we consider to be unusual. But if I got 2005 donors that had O negative blood out of that 32,000 donor blood drive, that would be unusual. Then to get the minimum usual value, we would look at 1920 minus 2 times 42. And what would we get for that? 1836. So that 1836, if I got 1,835 O negative blood donors out of the 32,000, I would consider that an unusually low number of O negative blood donors for that 32,000 donor drive. That's what that means. Notice our 1850 was in here in the usual region. Anything that's in between the 1836 and the 2004 is considered to be a usual value or an expected. It's not unusual. Anything out beyond the 1836 or the 2004 would be unusual.